continent and one of the least talked about countries actually uh, Mozambique Mozambique maybe it's it's least talked about because you know Africa was divided into zones right it was anglophone for the uh, English colonies mm. the francophone for the French colonies and then the Portuguese colonies they call that lusophone we talk about angola uh, uh guinea bissau mozambique right and by the way there was also a Sp former spanish colony only one country in africa was colonized by the spanish hey. that's equatorial guinea mm -hmm. the one you talk about with the uh, ngwema marshes ngwema oh. the, with the son who's, <laughs> the, who's the vice president hey, hey. Um, foreign minister what what, what? No, the, the father is the president right he's the vice president in Equatorial Guinea, yes, and, and he represents his father everywhere. Following, <laughs> follow him on Instagram, Teding <laughs> That's when you will know, yes, what life is all about. I'm telling you, yes. So anyway, that was a Spanish colony, the only one former for Spanish, and then uh, so Mozambique, capital Maputo, Maputo, formerly known as Lorenzo Marcus. Hey, Lorenzo <laughs> Marcus. All right. When Mozambique gained independence in 1975, do you know what the Portuguese did, Jalas? Mm -mm. They had built the infrastructure and, 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 and you know, everything there before independence, right? Mm. When they left, they left with everything. And even lifts in building, they filled them with cement and left. Hey. Na mother, they left with so much madarao. They didn't want these people to progress. They just blocked everything. Lifts were filled with cement. Muji sort. So anyway, first president of Mozambique, colorful character, revolutionary. His name was Samora Mois Machel. Samora Machel was like a legend in Africa. Former hospital warden. He was a warden in a hospital. But he was a revolutionary. He was the one who married Grasa Machel, and that's another story for another day. So anyway, one day in October, this month, 1986, he's coming from uh, OAU talks in Zambia. And from Zambia, he had to fly through South African territory to go to Mozambique. Mm -hmm. His plane crashed with himself on board and 37 other people in that plane, presidential plane. Assistant foreign minister, minister of this and that. I mean, 37 people perished. The plane hit the side of a hill and just disintegrated. Some more emotion. It was a shocker. By the way, we're talking 1986. So South Africa was still apartheid government. Mm. You know, mm. Mandela was still on Robben Island or heading over to Victor Foster. It was, it was terrible times. And of course, Mozambicans were, you know, they were supporting the ANC and the front, it was part of the frontline states. So when this plane went down, of course, the first thing, the first thought was, it's been uh, taken out. It's been brought down. Even to this day, they don't know what happened that day. Whether it was an accident, whether they followed the wrong beacon, or whether the plane was shot out of the skies. So anyway, Simona Michelle dies. Uh, Joaquim Chisano takes over and Mozambique is slowly but surely, you know, coming around. Huh? So, fast forward to, to, what was it? How can I forget? 1998. 1998. Yes, February. Form 1. Yes. I was oh, in Form you're 1. You're in Form 1. Yes. 1998, February, Jalas. Just like you had Hurricane Maria and uh, Gustavo and all, and Irma mm. and, and uh, Harvey. Mm. On the other side of the planet, right? In this side of the Indian Ocean coast, there was a typhoon coming from Mozambique like crazy. Wow. Coming with a vengeance. Typhoon. I was working for Reuters Television then. So, obviously, every story we did would have to call London first and say, hey, there's this potential story here. What do you guys think? So, I called them and I said, look, weather forecasters are saying there's a typhoon heading for Mozambique coast and it's going to be devastating. What do you guys think? So my boss then, Steve Wendy, he says, listen, Jeff, just send one guy. Send your cameraman. His name was John Dinky Mkize. We call him Dinky because he's like four foot eleven. Everyone calls him Dinky. We said, send Dinky. Let him, you know, be on the ground for a while just for coverage. And we'll see what happens. Sure enough, we send Dinky. First day he gets in there and, he, you know, gets his way around. Nothing happens. 
Next day, he says, listen, uh, there were some South African pilots there, huh? or helicopter pilots. He says, listen, can we just go out and see this, uh, whether this typhoon is coming, whether it's affected this country? Let's go see. As they're going, the typhoon hits a part of the country, southern Mozambique. So they fly there with this crew. And I'm telling you, Jalas, Dinky, they land at some village. And Dinky, you know, he's so short, he can stand up straight in a helicopter and still be able to film. <laughs> <laughs> That's how short he is. But Jalas, the pictures he took on that day because that storm was coming and it was crazy villagers carrying goats and chickens and babies and all their worldly possessions running from the village from the floods towards the helicopter I'm telling you, it was like a movie. And Dinky was filming the whole thing. And as the pilots, you know, one of them would jump out and get, help the people get on board, get on board. And then, you know, the, the helicopter would fill up, maybe 10, 12 people. And the helicopter would take off and leave the other people. And the floods were coming in. And the country started, you know, flood after. It was rising exponentially. That typhoon hit that country with a vengeance. So Dinky transmits those pictures right away. He gets back to Maputo, transmits them. We are looking at these pictures in Johannesburg. London is seeing these pictures. And before I could pick up the phone and dial London, Steve, my boss, calls me and says, Jeff, what the hell are you doing in Johannesburg? Why aren't you in Maputo? I said, hey, man, I asked you whether we could go. He said, get your you-know-what and get whatever you need. Go. Bro. We mobilized. We had about 20 crew members, 10 camera, 10, five this, five producers, and we flew in. Now everybody, the whole world had seen Dinky's pictures and everybody was on their way to Maputo. I mean, this is, you know, the life of a journalist. You see pictures like that, you get on a plane. When everybody's going the other way, you're going towards the event. Sure enough, the plane was packed like this every journalist on the continent was on those planes heading to mozambique we get there and of course now we have a head start because dinky has taken the pictures reuters television they're being shown cnn sky just everyone's showing our pictures so we get on the ground and now we start doing the story everyone is the all the big guns of every television network on the planet they're there reporting on this story one day we're at the airport because you know now the airport has become congested the world has seen these pictures they want to send help in the most have you ever landed at turkana airport yes you, at, is it maralala or Turk that, that airport yeah, yeah it's a strip right yes it's a strip with hardly any anything yes mm. that's exactly what maputo airport was like planes were just landing on their own pilots were landing on their own because these air traffic controllers just couldn't control this massive uh, influx of planes and helicopters and, and antonovs and all kinds of help coming in because it was crazy the shots were crazy so we went to, we decided let's do a story on this airport let's do a story so we went up to the control tower we filmed we interviewed the guys we showed how archaic this airport was just so that they could get some help the next day spanish no portuguese air force they sent all their personnel to come and rehabilitate that airport immediately because of the help that was coming two days later we're still filming the floods are still in parts of the country shy shy and other parts we're filming still i got a call from a friend of mine i say listen man We've just come back from some place and a baby just gave birth in a tree. A mother had been in a tree for like three days and she's just given birth. I said, what? He said, yeah, we have the pictures. I said, can you show me the pictures? And he showed us literally there was, some, there was a woman in a tree giving birth to a baby. And then the, the, the helicopter shows up somehow. Uh, helicopters with South African pilots showed up and the pilots were helping the mother with the baby still tied to the umbilical cord rescued them put them in the chopper and cut the cord and took them to safety those are uh, the people remember those pictures uh, those were the the most iconic pictures of that flooding the woman giving birth to a baby in a tree it was unbelievable by the way that little girl what was the name again it's uh Sa sarah pedro or something like yeah i remember the name pedro she's now it was it was what was it was it 1998? She's almost 20 now. She's almost 20 years. She survived. The mother survived. They became celebrities in, in their own little kind of way. But they were the ones who were the faces of the flooding in Mozambique at that time. But if it wasn't for the South African pilots, by the way, trained, highly specialized, very professional, 
that story would have gone south very quickly because until the world mobilized their air forces and armies and all kinds of personnel to come and help, it was the South Africans who were doing most of the work. It was incredible. It was amazing. And Dinky, John Dinkin Kize, four foot eleven cameraman, is the one who brought the world to Mozambique. And that is what we call a story. A day. It's the hot breakfast with Jeff and Jelano.